Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and welcome to Weekly Svelte. In this Weekly Svelte, we're going to be talking about what's new in Svelte in June of 2022. There's a lot of cool new stuff. Now, first and foremost, the blog post on here is in svelte.dev, and just select blog if you want to follow along. Otherwise, I'll just kind of read through what's going on here and maybe explain where I need to explain. First and foremost, they do say that Svelte Summit is behind us, so if you want to go ahead and check out any of those Svelte Summit videos, you can just click on this link and it will open YouTube directly um, with an ad, apparently. There we go. And next, what we have is what's new in Svelte itself. And then we'll talk about what's new in Svelte Kit. If you need to watch a difference between what the difference between Svelte and Svelte Kit are, we have a video on this channel. Just search uh, what the difference between Svelte and Svelte Kit or just look at the homepage or in this playlist. So what's new in Svelte? Custom events can now be canceled in the create event dispatch dispatcher function. Um, this is interesting. I've never needed to cancel an event, but it kind of seems like um, you should be able to. You can see down here the added bits to the docs. Events can be cancelable by passing in a third parameter to the dispatch function. The function returns false if the event is called with event.preventDefault. Otherwise, it returns true. So you can see that we have cancelable as true as a third parameter to our dispatch. And now we can actually listen for if the user calls prevent default or not. So if the listener called prevent default as in the user says prevent default within that function, then um, this should continue will be false. If prevent default is never called on these custom events, then should continue is true. So again, not something that I have a super big need for right now at this moment, but maybe I will. I like create event dispatcher. I like creating my own events. So that's something to keep an eye on. Next up is the const tag can now be used in if blocks to conditionally define variables. Now, we recently got the const block added, which allows us to define variables inside of our templates. But now we can say uh, we can do so within an if. So const is only allowed as the direct child of if, else, else, each, then, catch, component, or svelte fragment. So the big change there is just that the tag can now be used in an if block to conditionally define variables. Neat. Okay, lots of bug fixes apparently to svelte element animations and various DOM elements. Um, there's more here in the change log, which you can dive through. It's probably things you're not going to have to worry about. Fixed handling of void tags, fixed handling of Boolean attributes. Yeah, Svelte element is something that I'm I'm just getting into myself personally. But yeah, it looks like just more and more bug fixes. Now, what's new in Svelte Kit? Well, Svelte Kit uh, looks like it says Vite 299 was released. And they're saying that basically they've been helping out and keeping an eye on Vite 3. So that way, when Vite 3 is released, you can see the milestone here in GitHub. Looks like it's 69% complete. And we have the following open issues that the transition for Svelte to use v3 should be seamless. You gotta love major version updates. They always bring fun new things. And with v, um, v usually brings a lot of cool new stuff, maybe even not uh, features wise, but often performance wise. So I'm excited to see what's gonna happen there. Now, config.kit.alias lets you easily declare custom aliases to replace value in import statements. Let's take a look at the docs for this one because this is something that I do myself. You can see that in the config, we can now say kit alias and then alias things simply by saying dollar sign components or whatever you want, really, right? This is the alias and this is the path that it's aliased to, which is nice because let me see if I can pull up how we do it. Um, let me see. Right now, it's not nearly as fun to do. And sorry, I'm going to show you this kind of. Um, and you can see inside of ours, inside of our uh, config, which is a bit not messy, just a lot of stuff. We have a kit property. And then inside of the kit property, we have Vite and then resolve and then alias, then our alias itself, and then the path in which it should resolve to using the path dot resolve method from node.js, right? We we're using path imported from path. That's that's fine, but now we can do it this better way with kit alias, and then that's it. 
Gotta love that. No more imports. It's going to clean up my file a lot. So I like that into that one. And I'm somebody who aliases a fair amount of things. So I like that. Next one, pages marked for pre-rendering will now fail during SSR at runtime. So what does this mean? Uh, we have all these different ways in which we can load our sites, right? So we have SSR, which means that we request the site. Uh, that site then uses the server to generate the HTML, and then it sends the HTML back down the line to the user. What's pre-rendering? Well, pre-rendering allows you to essentially do that process ahead of time to have that data available as a straight up HTML file. However, it says there's a few issues around confusing things that happen if a page is pre-rendered with mutative methods. Thankfully, this is already errors at build time. However, it can be a bit of a foot gun during development. There's no wording that, wording that what you're doing is valid until you try to build. So this was something that uh, SvelteKit kind of already did, but again, just in runtime or just in build time, now gives you a bit of insight into that when you are building. So cool. I don't do a lot of pre-rendering myself. Maybe I, I should be doing more. We use mostly just caching and server-side rendering. Okay, next, breaking changes. Node 14 is no longer supported. Who cares? Get it out of there. Um, I, I don't care. Maybe you do. But uh, Node 14, see you later. I want Node 18 for that sweet uh, Node fetch. That's what I want. Request to favicon.io would no longer be suppressed. Instead, be handled as a valid route. Cool. AMP support has been moved to a separate Svelte AMP package. Okay, cool. Don't use AMP. I have no plans on using AMP because honestly, I don't like it. Uh, so I'm glad it's uh, in its own separate package now. Generated types are now written to the types directory. Update your imports accordingly. Now, this is not something that I, I have to worry too much about, but you can check out the PR for more information there. This is a minor change here, but one that you'll be aware of the first time you start up your app using the latest version of SvelteKit. Svelte.head and Svelte.body are now SvelteKit.head and SvelteKit.body and app.html. I'd imagine this is just done for clarity's sake, considering this is something that exists as a SvelteKit thing and not a Svelte thing specifically. So might as well, who know? Yeah, who cares? Uh, load input is now load event. I would assume that's referring to the types. Dropped Wrangler one in favor of Wrangler two. So Wrangler here, update to support Wrangler V2. The Cloudflare workers adapter does not yet support the generally available Wrangler V2. Wrangler V2 is a huge improvement. The sooner, the better. So I haven't uh, done too much with Cloudflare workers myself just yet, but I know that SvelteKit is a great way to dip your toes into Cloudflare workers. So I'm psyched that they updated to something that apparently has a lot of new benefits. Might be time for me to dive into Wrangler 2 and see why it's actually better. Now let's take a look at some of these um, community showcase stuff. We have a planetarium. Spatula is a tool for building shading materials. Uh, that sounds great for uh, Svelte Cube kind of stuff. Ward lets you create protected links to a variety of single sign-on providers. Magidoc, highly customizable GraphQL documentation generator. This one specifically has caught my eye because I use GraphQL and I would love a documentation generator. And even so, when I went to look at this, um, it looked it looked nice. Where's the... Um... So if you're using something like GraphQL and you want a uh, demo or a, a generator, Here, here's a demo right here, check it out. You can get all your queries, your mutations, your types. Um, honestly, I think I, I need to start trying this. Not that I need one more tool in my code base, but I really think um, that would be really helpful for developers who are onboarding into our system. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. In fact, I always love pawing through a lot of these projects. You'll even notice if you scroll down, one of our videos has made the cut. If we check it out, I believe it's auto importing components, which was last week's weekly svelte. There's a lot of great stuff in here. So as always, I highly recommend pawing through many of these things, checking this out. Obviously watch all of the svelte summit recordings, just put them on, even if something isn't concern you, you know, sometimes I, I like to put on just conference talks in the background just to get it kind of in my brain. Now, one cool one is one that I have been kind of watching is svelte headless table. Why headless table? Well, tables, uh, tables, they, they can be fine. And, and in fact, I I've been like kind of very keeping, keeping my eyes on every single table option. It sounds stupid because it's a table, right? But this Svelte headless tables allows you to do really interesting things, create table, create columns, create view model, subscribe, create render, render, 
it feels a little over to me, like over overdone, overwhelming. Um, it feels a little bit too much. I mean, we're talking about tables here. Um, but if you need some beefy table stuff and you want to write a lot of code, it kind of feels... <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to sound condescending when I say that. You do end up having to write a lot of code with something like this. Um, then this kind of plugin is for you. I, I really think that this might be a good option for anybody who wants a feature-rich, highly performant table library. Um, me personally, I, I like a more simple table plugin because when I'm doing tables, they're never usually that intense, but uh, that looks really nice. It looks nice in a, a lot of ways. A little Svelte mini player for media. Gotta love that. Look at this thing. Um, Here's a Vite plugin that removes your console log statement so you don't ship console logs if that's something you'd like to do. And then a Svelcro is a component performance tracker for Svelte applications. Now, uh, this one I think I need to dedicate some time to because this is going to show you really nicely. <laughs> it's, it's really pretty neat. Render count, render performance, component stats, component dependency tree. This is my kind of tool here. So again, a lot of cool stuff here, a lot of fun stuff. Give this a try, give this a look, and just head on over to the Svelte documentation and paw through this stuff yourself. Either way, that is the update for June 2022. Hope this helps if you're not the type of person who likes to read a blog and just want a quick update. This is your weekly Svelte, and next week we're going to be talking about some more code stuff. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.